Hallelujah, thine glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine glory. Revive us again. Hallelujah, thine glory. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, thine glory. Revive us again. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, O my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Father God, you are holy, you are gracious. You are the King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and ending. You are the first, the last, which is, which was, and which is to come. You are all and in all and through all and above all and in us all. And we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for your love, your grace, and your favor. We thank you for your promises today. And we ask you, Lord God, to continue to nurture, to comfort, to encourage, and strengthen, Lord God. In Jesus' holy name, amen and amen. God bless you today. What a glorious, glorious day it is in the Lord. Now, last week we did 1 Peter chapter 1. This week we're going to do 1 Peter chapter 2. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. A living stone and a holy people. A living stone and a holy people. Hallelujah, Lord God. Beginning in 1 Peter 2 and 1, it says, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and all hypocrisies and all envies and all evil speakings. <laughs> Woo! You know, it's funny. I sometimes, if I'm watching the news and I'll see an individual who's, they're talking about his life and he's, you know, some people believe he's had people killed. Some people believe that he's done this to people and that to people. And I read this verse right here and it says, lay aside all malice, wickedness, depravity. Lay, lay that all aside. Amen. Lay aside all guile, trickery, deceit, and falsehood. Any, any lying or cheating you might be thinking of doing to somebody. Any words you might say about somebody that just isn't true. Lay aside all hypocrisies. Oh, hallelujah. You know, you, uh, hypocrisy is when you like pat somebody on the back while you're telling them how much you love them and then you're sticking a knife into them with the other hand. That's hypocrisy. And envies, laying aside all envy. Stop looking at what somebody else has or you think that somebody else has what should be yours. Let me tell you something. God, ha, ha, God is the one who desires to bless you. God is the one who desires to prosper you. And it doesn't really matter what, ha, hallelujah, Lord God, what somebody else has done by hook or by crook, or what somebody else has done for the Lord, it really doesn't matter because God has a plan just for you. Hallelujah, Lord God. And laying aside all evil speaking, where you defame somebody, you try to talk, them, talk bad about them, you, you're selling wolf tickets against them, and backbiting, stop doing all that. For Peter here was... He had messed up. He had done so many things that God told him not to do, but he was also the one 
that in an exercise of faith, hallelujah, Lord God, in an exercise of faith, he said, you are the Christ, the son, the son of the living God. Oh, hallelujah, Lord God. First Peter 2 and 2, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the Lord. Let me tell you something. You're holding the little baby in your arms, okay? He's not interested in whiskey. No, he's not interested in drinking a beer. Oh, hallelujah, Lord God. He, he, he doesn't look at that big T-bone steak and say, ooh, that sure doesn't look good. No, all a little baby wants is the sincere milk of life, the, the, the fluid that is going to strengthen him and build him up and cause him to become strong. Hallelujah, Lord God. And God is trying to tell us that we need to be as babes, newborn babes in Christ, and have that desire for the sincere milk of the word of God. Not the desire for the lies and the cheating and the stealing, but in of the sincere, hallelujah, milk of the word of God that we may grow. The most amazing amount of growth in a baby's life comes while the baby is only drinking formula or only having its mother's milk. That's the, the greatest leap of growth that happens in their lives. Amen? So it says here in verse 3, If so be that you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. If you have noticed in your walk, if you have noticed in your life that God is gracious to you. The Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish. Ha! but should have everlasting life. And it says right here in Ezekiel 3 and 3 and Revelations 10 and 9, we are supposed to partake, to eat of the commandments of God. The word of God is food for you. It is come, it's supposed to come up here and replace the foolishness that the devil has gotten us to put up there. Oh, hallelujah, Lord God. In verse 3, it says, If so be that you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. God is gracious to us. He fills our lives with grace. We, we mess up from time to time. We mess up more often than we ought to. And God says, I will be gracious to you because of my love for you. I will be gracious to you because of my love for my son who died for you. Hallelujah, Lord God. Of all things that we need to understand about God, people always want to talk about the law. They want to talk about the punishment. They want to talk about the judgment. But of all things we must know about God is God is a gracious, loving God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Verse 4 says, To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God, and precious. See, we're talking about God, and now we're talking about the Son of God. And there is no difference whether we're talking about God or we're talking about the Son of God. There is no difference in the character of the being. Oh, hallelujah, Lord God. Jesus is not a creation of God. Jesus is the offspring of and Jesus bears all the spiritual life, the spiritual power, the spiritual anointing of God. The Bible says that Jesus has all the power of the Godhead within him. And he has all the ability to do miracles, to be a miracle. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible says that after they crucified him, and he went down into the pit and he spoke to the people in the pit. And then he rose from the dead. And, and you might say, well, why did he rise from the dead? Because the Bible says it was not possible that death should hold him. Oh, hallelujah. You can't kill God. You killed his physical body. But that immortal spirit who is God just caused that physical body to raise back up again. Oh, hallelujah today. Glory, glory, glory to God. So we have to read that. We have to understand that we are one in, you know, we sing that song. We are one in the spirit. We are one in the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord God. It is our connection and our adherence to the Holy Spirit 
that makes us one with God. I can't count the number of times when I have prepared to bring a message and just as ha, 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 just as I was getting ready and, and, and preaching the message and I just finished it and I was just happened to go over and check a YouTube channel of a, of a minister here, a minister there that I like to watch and they were preaching the exact same message. Hallelujah. They were using the same scriptures. They were bringing similar analogies. They, the fact is that God knew that his people needed to hear that message that day and he had several of his ministries, ministers bringing that particular message. That is who we are in Christ. We are one with God. We are the body of Christ bringing his will together. Hallelujah, Lord God. Glory, glory to God. God knows what we need to hear and he sends a sermon to cover what it is that is needed. Verse six says, wherefore also it is contained in the scripture. Ha! Ah, behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believes on him shall not be confounded. If we believe in Jesus, we cannot, cannot be confounded. We cannot be or disgraced or embarrassed. Hallelujah. Sometimes you say, well, I feel so embarrassed that that happened. Why? Were you doing what God said to do? Yes, but they got mad. They cussed me out. They this, they that. As long as you did what God said, oh, hallelujah. Greater is he that is in me than all those that are out in the world today. Glorious Savior. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 is one of the most wonderful scriptures because it explains this fact. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Okay, you're supposed to trust in God with all your heart, not even thinking about how is this going to work, not leaning to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge God and he will direct your paths. There have been times when I've been praying and, and I just, it's, it's like sometimes you feel like you just can't. And I was taking a nap one day and all of a sudden, I heard myself praying in tongues. And I was just praying in tongues. I was just praying in tongues. I was just praying in tongues. While I was taking a nap, the flesh, hallelujah, the Bible says the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. My flesh was saying, we're going to take a nap. Now my spirit said, no, we're not. We're, we got a work to do. Oh, hallelujah, Lord God. The Bible says that the wind blows where it wills but we don't know how it does. This is not a wind of adversity. This is the Holy Spirit of God that blows wherever the Holy Spirit is telling it to blow, that God is telling it which way to blow. And it touches our hearts in the word that we bring and the word that we preach and the word that we send forth is the word that God gave us because we did something simple. We just simply trusted in the Lord with all our heart, not leaning to our own understanding, but in all our ways, ha, 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 acknowledge him and he shall direct our paths. Verse seven says, unto you, therefore, which believe. I love Peter. I love Peter. Peter was a man that had a heart for God. He, he messed up frequently, but he had a heart to serve God. And he said, unto you, therefore, which believe Jesus is precious, but unto them which are disobedient, he is a stone which the builders disallowed. Who were the builders? The builders were the Jews of the time. They were the chief priests, the, the Pharisees, the Sadducees. Oh, hallelujah. They were the ones that didn't want to accept Jesus because it meant they would lose some of their power. They didn't want to accept who he is. Oh, hallelujah today. But in denying him, they were obeying the prophetic word that had come hundreds of years before. And they said, hallelujah, that we, the builders, are going to disallow and he has made the chief cornerstone. Hallelujah. How about that? They wanted to say, well, we don't need Jesus. And Jesus says, I'm going to make myself with the help of the Father and the Holy Spirit, I'm going to make myself the chief cornerstone. You can't build the building. 
without the chief cornerstone. Hallelujah, Lord God. It didn't matter. Oh, hallelujah, Lord God. It didn't matter that before we were a people because now we are the people of God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Mercy has been given to us. A living eternity is given to each and every one of us. Verse 11, dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soil or against the soul. Excuse me. Agapetos means loved by God as only God can. See, God's love is a, is a love that will give a life away because the love he has for us is so great. We are to stay as strangers and pilgrims in this world. Yes, we live in this world, but we cannot be a part of its rules and ways of doing things. We are not supposed to submit to our fleshly lust. We are supposed to renew our mind with the word of God so that we may think as our spirit already does. Your mind can get you in trouble, but your spirit is always telling you, no, 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 let's go this way. You're always figuring, if you're listening to your spirit, you're feeling a tongue in your heart to go another direction. Yeah, but your mind is telling you, but this makes sense. Well, it only makes sense because you need to study to show yourself approved. A workman who need not be ashamed because you're going the wrong direction, rightly dividing the word of truth. Verse th 13. Oh, I'm sorry. Verse 12. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. You see, they're going to watch you and they're going to see, they're going to see that you aren't a hater. They're going to see that you care about people, even if people don't care about you. They're going to see that your heart, hallelujah, Lord God, your heart is linked to the heart of God. And because of that, you will humble yourself even to the, even to the cross. Jesus had to humble himself to the cross. Why? Because he didn't want to die, but he didn't want us, hallelujah, to die for eternity. And it says, your good works toward them will cause them to glorify God when he visits them. When he comes to them in a day of visitation and they've treated you like dirt and they've treated you badly, but God begins to touch their heart, begins to speak to them, and they begin to realize we were wrong. We were wrong. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father. I was listening to a guy the other day and it just tickled me. He was talking, he was trying to explain, hallelujah, the difference, and, and he was trying to explain about Jesus. And he was talking about how Jesus died on the cross and he rose again on the third day and he's alive and sitting at the right hand of the Father. And he said, and another person said, well, what about the other religions? And he says, what about Allah? What about Muhammad? What about the Hindus? What about... And he says, is Muhammad still alive? Well, no. Well, is the person that started the Hindu language, is, are they still alive? No. Well, what about the people that started this faith? Are they still alive? Well, no. He said, if you're walking down a road and you get to the end of the road and there's a Y in the road, and you have to choose to go to the right hand or to the left hand. And you look down and there's a dead body and there's a live body. Who are you going to ask for directions? Oh, hallelujah today. <laughs> it just tickled me. Who are you going to ask for directions? The living Savior or the dead prophet that just brought a false word? Who are you going to follow today? Glorious Savior. It says right here in verse 13, Submit yourself unto every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. What does that mean? Don't be a lawbreaker. Don't run around thinking, I'm serving God. You can't tell me what to do. No, you observe the ordinances of man because God put them into power to keep peace in the world today. And it says, so submit yourself to those ordinances for the Lord's sake 
whether it is to the whether it is to the king as supreme don't do it you know just because you're you're thinking well that doesn't make any sense to me don't you got to do it because you're doing it for the lord's sake hallelujah lord god do not say god knows my heart I hear people say that all the time. Well, I understand what you're saying, but God knows my heart. Yes, he does. He knows that you're wicked and you don't want to give up your sin. That's what God knows. He knows your heart. God says he's not interested in what's inside your heart. God says, I'm interested in what has been going on, hallelujah, around you today. First Peter, hallelujah, Lord God, 2.14, or unto governors, as unto them who are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those that do well. Notice that. Those that are living their lives and living upright lives, the Bible says that they, there, there is a praise about them. Amen? The Bible says there is a praise about that. And you have the right, hallelujah, to live and to live holy and to live upright. And those that God puts in power are supposed to recognize that you are a holy person. You are a gracious person. Sometimes they won't because sometimes the way they got into power, the way they keep their power, the way they want to live their power is to take away from you rather than give to you. And when that happens, the Bible says that is when you pray that there is peace on the earth so that you may find peace. Oh, hallelujah, Lord God. Verse 15, for so is the will of God that with well-doing you will put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. There are foolish men out there all the time that are saying this against you and that against you and the other thing against you. Well, there's, there's an old saying that even a foolish man can sound wise if he doesn't say anything. But if he opens up his mouth, he reveals himself to be a fool. A wise man can still keep silence, but pray and live holy. And he will be reckoned as a wise man. Why? Because he has kept silence and prayed and lived holy. Hallelujah, Lord God. Verse 16, as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God, you are free, but you don't use your freedom as a way to say, well, I'm free in Christ so I can hurt you. I'm free in Christ so I can punish you. I'm free in Christ so I can talk about you. No, use, do not use the freedom for a cloak of maliciousness, but as servants of God. You see, you are, hallelujah, you are a disciple of God. You are also, hallelujah, an ambassador for Christ. If you're an ambassador for Christ, that means you speak the word that the Father speaks. You speak the words that the Savior speaks. You only speak those words. So you can't use, hallelujah, the freedom that you have in Christ because you're not afraid of hell. You're not afraid of dying. You can't use that freedom to speak against people. Hallelujah, Lord God. Verse 17, honor all men. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. Hallelujah. That can be the king, of, the king of kings and lord of lords. And it can be the king of your nation, the leader of your nation. It says here, honor all men. Give people respect. You know, there's so many people I hear, well, why did you, why did you shoot him? He disrespected me. Everybody wants to be respected. Everybody wants to be honored. God says, go ahead and honor all men. I will be the one who is the final judge whether they are due that honor. But you give them the honor. Oh, hallelujah, today. Verse 18. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the froward. Amen? What is froward? Froward is another word. Hallelujah for evil and, and disrespectful. So it says, if you are serving somebody, if you are working for somebody, work for them with fear, knowing that their relationship between them and God is assured because God sent them. 
And so you fear them as you're going to fear God. Why? Because they are your ruler. They are your leader. It is not degrading to be a servant. It is a great blessing. Hallelujah. 1 Peter 2.19 For this is thankworthy. Okay? It is worthy of thanks if a man for conscience toward God endure grief suffers wrongfully. So if somebody's talking about you like a dog, somebody's treating you badly, somebody's wounding you because they don't like your relationship with Jesus, well, then you have God's thanks. See, God's thanks are worth more than all the pain and the grief and the sorrows that the enemy might bring. Hallelujah, Lord God. You are a symbol of Christ in that person's life. 1 Peter 2.20 For what glory is it if when you are buffeted for your faults, you shall take it patiently. But if, when you do well, you suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable to God. See, God is saying, look, you messed up, and they got mad at you for messing up, and they told you off and said, don't do it again. You don't get a praise from God because you messed up. It's just your opportunity to grow and not to do it again. But if they come and tell you you messed up and you did this and this and this and you know it wasn't you, then you should be filled with joy because you had the opportunity to endure the grief and suffer wrongfully for God's sake. You might say, why would I want to do that for his sake? Because he is the one that is going to bless you. He is the one that is putting money in your heavenly bank account, as you will. Glorious to God. 1 Peter 2 and 20, For what glory is it if you are buffeted for your faults, you take it patiently? I can't. I, I took it patiently. Yeah, they fussed at me. They really fussed at me back. Well, what'd you do? Well, I did thus and so and thus and so. So you knew you did wrong. Oh, yeah, I did wrong. Okay. And you're, you're suffering patiently. Good for you. Move on. But if you do well and you suffer, if you're doing the right thing and you suffer for it and take it patiently, oh, then God sits up and notices. See, if you take it patiently when you mess up, God just looks at us sometimes. He just shakes his head. He says, oh, that's, yeah, that's one of mine. We're going we're gonna to work on him. But when he doesn't, when you don't mess up and you're doing the right thing and people still treat you like dirt for it, God sits up and takes note and says, wait a minute now. Wait a minute. That's mine. That one's mine. And I'm going to bless him. Oh, hallelujah, Lord God. So what does that mean? That means if you messed up, own it, okay? If you messed up, take it. Don't, don't sit there and get upset with people because you messed up and you missed it. Philippians 1 and 6, God is the one who began this good work in you. And I am certain that he won't stop before it is complete on the day Jesus Christ returns, okay? God has begun a work in you. If you are in Christ Jesus, he has begun a work in you. He's not going to quit until the day that you go to home to be with the Lord or until the day Jesus returns and we all go to be with the Lord. He is not going to, comp comp to quit the work that he is doing in your life until the day that you and he are face to face. And on that day, you will be instantly made complete. Oh, hallelujah today. 1 John 3 and 2 says, Beloved, now we are, we are now the children of God, and what we shall be has not yet been revealed. <laughs> In other words, I got plenty, of, I mess up plenty, and so it isn't revealed in me what I will be when I'm standing face to face before Him. Oh, hallelujah. There might be some times, some moments in my life where I will do things in such a way that people say, wow, he, he really knows the Lord. But then there are going to be times in my life when I'm going to do things and they're going to go, are you sure he knows the Lord? But there comes a time, oh, hallelujah today, that people will say 
we know that when Christ appears, that we shall be like him, for we will see him as he is. In other words, when Christ comes, you're going to have your glorified body. It is not going to be interested in sinning against God. You're going to have your glorified body. You're going to be holy before God and righteous in all things. 1 Peter 2.21 For even hereunto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow in his steps. See, Christ set the example. Christ suffered. He was crucified. He died. He suffered for the opportunity to do a work that God called him to do. He set an example for you to follow that you might suffer to do a work that God called you to do. Oh, hallelujah, today. And as he said in Matthew 16 and 24, follow me. Hallelujah, Lord God. 1 Peter 2 and 22, who did no sin, who, Jesus, did no sin, and neither was guile found in his mouth. Oh, hallelujah, Lord God. Jesus did no sin. He never lied. He never cheated. He never stole. He never did the wrong thing while he lived here on earth. He suffered for us. He set an example. And he said, follow me. Hallelujah, Lord God. 1 Peter 2.23, who when he was reviled, and he was reviled, the Bible says that when they were done with him, he was more beat up, more torn up than any man. They couldn't even recognize him as being human anymore. And it said, but when he was reviled, he did not revile again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself unto him that judges rightfully. Oh, hallelujah. If you read, when you read the scripture where Jesus has, has communication, where he speaks to people, you will see he almost never convicts or condemns ordinary people. Almost always he is gracious to them. He is lifting them up. The only time that he ever speaks words that would be considered to be a challenge or considered to be maybe disrespectful is when he's talking to religious leaders who have called him the devil, who have called him hallelujah, the daughter of a, of a prostitute or something because his, his mother, hallelujah, was pregnant out of wedlock. We know that God gave her the seed to carry, but we also know that the people knew that she had not been with a man. Well, they knew that she had to have been with somebody because she was pregnant, and they weren't willing to accept that. And so that they came up to Jesus and they say, we know who our father is. And Jesus said, if you believed, hallelujah, if you believe what Abraham believed, because he saw my day and he was happy for it. If you believe what Abraham believed, because they said Abraham is our father. He said, if you believe what Abraham believed, that he would be your father, but he is not your father. Satan is your father. Oh, hallelujah. What a terrible blow for somebody in ministry to be told, Satan is your father. Hallelujah, Lord God. In verse 24, who his own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree, hanging on a cross for us, that we being dead to sin should live under righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. Hallelujah, Lord God. He bore our sins in his own body. Many times we get sick just because of sin in our life. But he bore our sins on the tree in his own body, that we being dead to sin should live in righteousness. And by the stripes that he experienced, our soul and our body was healed. Hallelujah, Lord God. 1 Peter 2.25, For when you as sheep going astray, but are now returned to the shepherd and bishop of your soul. We were all sheep going astray. Oh, hallelujah. My, when I was a young child, my sister used to take me to church. And 
And then she got married and she moved across country. And I remember getting on my bicycle and trying to find that church. I remember, all I remembered about it was it was round. And I tried to find that church. I never did find that particular church. But I had a desire, I had a yearning desire to find the place where she brought me, where I heard the word of God. Hallelujah. I was a sheep from that moment on going astray. I got into more trouble and did this and did that. But Christ never let go of me. And finally, when I was 21, he reeled me back in again, and I am grateful to him. Hallelujah, Lord God. So we can return to the shepherd and bishop of our souls. We can be thankful for all that God has done in our lives. And we can bear this one thing. We are never alone if we are in Christ Jesus. God loves us. He loves you. He has a desire to help you to grow, to flourish, and to be filled with life. Peter is, is a wonderful author because he's very bold and very passionate about everything that he speaks. And I just want each and every one of you just to be encouraged today to know God loves you. He is gracious toward you. All you have to do is look up, say, Lord, please forgive me for my sins. Come into my heart, come into my heart and save my soul. Let Jesus be the savior of my soul and forgive me for all my sins, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Pray that prayer and ask God to forgive you for your sins and to forgive you for your failures. And the Bible says, oh, hallelujah, that he will come in and sup with you and you will sup with him. Hallelujah, Lord God, and you will be one in Christ. God bless you, beloved. I love and I appreciate you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you for your love, your grace, your holiness. I ask you today, Lord God, to speak to these that hear this word. Speak to their hearts. Comfort them, nurture them, encourage them. Embrace them, Lord God, with your arms in the name of Jesus. We thank you for that today. And I ask you, Lord God, just to continue to be a miracle working God and to continue, Lord God, to bless in the power of Jesus Christ. We thank you for that today and we give you all the glory and the praise in Jesus' name, amen and amen. What I say unto one, I say unto all, watch and pray until we meet again. God bless you, beloved.